Hey, quilters, welcome to AccuQuilt Live. I'm Pam Heller, AccuQuilt's cutting expert. Thanks so much for joining us today. The lovely Leslie is in the house. How are you? I am doing good. I'm tired today, but I'm tired doing today. good. Tired today. That's all right. And it's so cold out. Oh, yeah. I think the change in the weather is getting me. I think so, too, for me as well. Yeah. I, you know, it was nice over the weekend, apparently. And then now it's like... Oh, yeah, you were gone. How I was in trip? L.A. where it was 72 every day. Just... Thank you, Los Angeles, for hosting the good weather. But it's so weird because in a couple days, it's supposed to be 50 again here. I know. I know. It's crazy. But so many of you are in the snow, right? Snow yeah. all over the country. Brock says you're in a sew storm. Means you're supposed to... There you go. <laughs> Stay home and sew. All right, let's see where everybody is watching from today. We have people watching from Iowa, Fredericksburg, Virginia. Mar Mar Maria is watching. Um... Oh, Southeast Minnesota, Trudy's watching. Thanks for being with us today. All right, quilters, here are the new quilts from our pre-show video. First up is Jenny's, uh, Jenny H. Ooh. Okay, Leslie, do you not love the colors of this? I do, that's very spring. It very much makes me happy. <laughs> yeah, I love it. And she used her cube, because look, do you see like the chisel shape mm -hmm. and the corners? Um, uh, with Square on point. Yeah, square on point. Square and square, it's beautiful. Good job, Jenny. Next, we have Lori B. Okay, this is so pretty. I love how it looks like railroad fence, right? Oh, and yeah. What did you think it looked like? I don't know. Now just, that you just... said that forever, that's what she's going to say. And thirdly, we have Terry C. Look at how pretty this one is. And this one looks like winter. But again, that square and square block, one of my favorite. I think that's the crown on crown on point one that we released with the uh, setting triangles. Oh yes, one would say so. That's true. And look, how she has that nice wide border on the edge. So much looks so much different with the different color. Uh huh. Go quilt. Change the colorway. All right. Here is my photo of the day. So. Porfirio Gomez is going to um, join us here shortly. Um, but this is one of the quilts that is hanging currently in our gallery. And we're going to talk about it more here in just a few minutes. But it has my very favorite shape. Leslie is? Half right. square triangles. Yeah, half square triangles, hand down. Um, so the question of the day is, what is your favorite shape in a quilt box? Leslie, do you have a favorite shape? Um, I like the corner, the Bow tie shape. <gasps> Bow ties is fun. Because I can make cat faces out of it. <laughs> she can. She did. <laughs> so in the comments section, let us know what is your favorite shape. Now, today is all about pattern conversion. But before we get into the details, we are going to chat with one of our go-getters. Her name is Porfiria Gomez, and she's going to be joining us in just a few minutes. Um, her quilts are hanging currently in the AccuQuilt gallery. So if you go to the AccuQuilt website and go to learn, right, is that where you find it? Yes. Um, you can watch a whole video and watch the gallery. It's super cool. And it's Wednesday, so of course we have a promo for you today. We have Quilt 40 and take 40% off your order, plus free shipping if you live in the contiguous U.S. And Leslie, our Go Big is on sale as well, right? It is. It's $225 off currently. Perfect. And it will ship to you free if you live in the contiguous U.S. So great deals today. Today I'm going to give away one of our Go 6 inch strip dies. This is actually a die that I use a lot to create those wide borders on quilts. And I just love it because it just kind of breaks things up so much. I just think it's great. So be sure to register for future events on our AccuQuilt event page for your chance to win prizes on Wednesday. By registering, you receive event emails. That way you'll never miss any exciting tutorials. And Leslie's going to announce the winner of our registered viewer at the end of our show. Yesterday, it was all about farm animals. Did you see our newest die to try? It is the Go Farm Animals Medley. It has three shapes, the cow, the chicken, and the pig. It is only available at AccuQuilt.com. And since it is an applique shape, it has the free embroidery downloads. But currently, since it is National Embroidery Month, our embroidery files are 15% off for the ones that are for purchase. So huge shout out to all of our um, designers who make embroidery files, V-Stitch, Marjorie Busby does some. They're great. So did you like that? Did you like the farm animals? 
Yes, I think they're adorable. So cute. Do you have a favorite animal on the shape? The pig. The pig is my favorite. I just like the little curly tail. The curly tail, I know. It's just all about the tail. All right, so let's welcome um, Porfiria to our show. She is a an amazing go-getter and just new to her quilting journey. Hello, Porfiria, how are you? I'm well, how are you? I'm good. I loving your hat. Thank you so much. <laughs> Looking I'm a hat. So if you notice, I'm always wearing one. I noticed I love that. I love it. I love it. So, Porfiria, you're new to quilting. So, do you just want to give our viewers just a little um, information about your quilting journey? How did you start? Um, I started uh, quilting really seriously about uh, three years ago. I grew up seeing my mom quilt, um, but I never really, like, put everything that I should have put into it. So, I just started... Um, getting really serious about it after I had my son. Um, and I got even more serious, like I said, three, three years ago with trying to just challenge myself to see what I could create. And it's been just an amazing journey since then. I just love that. I love the fact that you had kind of this influence and then you thought, huh, maybe I should try that. Now, yeah. when you create quilts, you have huge, big shapes and strips and chunks in it. How, why do you use those big, large shapes? Because I think that's amazing. Well, for one, um, I love to see the quilting in um, my ah. quilts. Like, I, stitching, I think you could tell a story with your stitching, whether you're right on um, the precise you know, goal line that you create or whether you make like little misfits or mi mistake mistakes along the way. It's like your hands create something and it, it tells a story. So I've Beautiful. always loved the idea of seeing the stitching in your quilts that's able to tell your personal story. Even if you use a long armor, I feel right. like it still tells a story. Oh, okay. So see, that's brilliant because we've talked a lot about on our show about how different the quilting makes your project look, right? And so yeah. for me, that's kind of a personal thing. I like to quilt my own quilts because then I can kind of choose the direction that I want to go. But I love that concept that it tells a story. That's wonderful. Okay. Now, do you have a favorite shape that you use <laughs> in your quilt designs? Well, you already said it. I was going to say it, but you said it. So we share, we have something in common that has Yay. to be a triangle. It's my heart. Um, everywhere I go, I always see half square triangles everywhere. Yep. At, like, I was shopping yesterday at my local supermarket and I was looking up at the ce ceiling and I saw half square triangles. So they're just something that I, I love. The triangle is just like my favorite shape. Yeah, I love it. I was on an elevator last weekend and I was like, dang, there are half square triangles. I could make this block. <laughs> Right? And that's what you do as quilters. That's great. And I love the fact that at AccuQuilt, we cut off the dog ears of those half score triangles so they line up together. Yeah, I just think it's such a great uh, scrap buster. Now, you yesterday launched a new um, project for the Color of Connection. Do you want to talk about that? Because I think our viewers are going to be so interested in this. Yes, with my amazing partners, uh, Collective Quilts and Niche Quilts. Um, we came together last year and 2020, actually. Yeah, actually the year before, in 2020, to create um, a way that people who love quilting can connect. Um, and this year we launched our second pattern and it's a way that you can just connect with people in the quilting community uh, via media because we're all on media. I know a right. lot of us are trying to get back into uh, going to going do the day-to-day -day things that we used to do or um, mm. getting back outside but we're still like really into media um, these days just to survive so this is a chance and an opportunity for people to connect and meet and and just share um, common interests of sewing right. so we're super excited about um, our pattern um, you can definitely head over to our site www dot color of connection quilt and purchase your pattern and join us on our quilt along for this new fun uh, quilting pattern. Okay, so I knew about this a couple of weeks ago, so I've already downloaded my pattern. I already purchased it, downloaded it. I'm already Thank doing you. it. <laughs> you bet. And I think that for me, the thing I love about this pattern is that the colorway is gonna be so different, right? Like the colors you choose or that Leslie would choose or I would choose are gonna be so different, but yet the pattern is the same. And so when you talked about connectivity, that was the first thing I thought of was, you know, we share this pattern, we're gonna, it's gonna look completely different. Yeah. yeah, and that's 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 the most exciting part because we all put our little 
our, our little personality, our, our feelings, our mo everything goes into what colors you decide to pick and create for your color connection um, quilt. And it's just such a great way to connect with somebody with questions like, why did you choose these colors? Tell me about it. How can it relate to me so that both of us can kind of have this connecting dialogue and, and connect and, you know, just people that you normally wouldn't connect to. That's right. what I love about it. Right. it the is going all over and everybody just has the opportunity to just learn and meet somebody that they probably would not have connected with outside. Um, right. And this just brings us all together. I and it's over a, a common interest of quilting. That's what I love so much about it. Now the Quilt Along launched yesterday, but we can still join today. And it goes Absolutely. through, and it goes through when? The end of the month? The end of the month. So okay. February 1st to February 28th. Excellent. All right, so give us one more time the website so our quilters can join you. So you want to head to www.colorofconnectionquilt, um, or you can visit me, myself, Miss Porphyria, on Instagram to get the details and, um, and direct message me. I'll be more than happy to, you know, show you the way. That's great. Thank you so much for joining us today. I know it's a busy time with your launch of your project, but thanks so much for joining us. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, dear. Thank bye -bye. you for having me. Thank you so much. You bet. Bye-bye. All right, quilters, don't forget to join Porphyria. This is a great project. Um, I, like I said, I've already downloaded the uh, pattern, and I'm ready to start. Okay, so today we're going to talk about pattern conversion. So um, just so you know that all of the blocks that we talk about today are public domain. So here is my thing to say to you. If, you purchase, if you're going to uh, convert a pattern, and it's for purchase, you need to purchase that pattern, okay? We have lots of quilt designers who that's, that's their living and we wanna respect them and the art that they have. So all of the blocks today are public domain, but again, if you have a, a pattern that you've purchased, knock yourself out, we're gonna talk about it. All right, so the, it all starts with identifying shapes in a block, okay? So today we're gonna use our eight inch cube. It's part of the Ready, Set, Go. Um, it comes with that two and a half inch strip die. But remember we have six sizes of cubes, four, six, eight, nine, 10, and 12. We're gonna open up the eight inch one today and just go through it briefly. And then I'm gonna leave it open because um, we're gonna cut and sew some blocks here. All right, so here we go, ta-da. All right. Um, Leslie, we pull the skinny one first, how come? So you don't break a fingernail. That's it, so you don't break a nail. <laughs> and what's inside this skinny one? Um, you should have your cutting mat, there's like a pattern booklet, yeah. and then the, um, yeah. all but the four inch cube has a DVD. The four inch cube videos live on YouTube. Yep, they all live on YouTube, yep. okay? So pull out the skinny one first. And then there are eight shapes in every cube. They work together to make 72 mix and match patterns. Those are free downloadable patterns at AccuQuilt.com. And we're gonna start here with shape number one. So this is really important to know, quilters. The cube system is based on a four patch system, okay? So shape number one in every cube is a square. Four of these sewn together in this case makes an eight inch finished block. So if you're using the four inch cube, it's gonna make a four inch finished block and so forth, okay? Don't think I'm getting the eight inch cube, it's gonna make eight inch blocks. There's some sewing involved, okay? It's gonna cut four of them, okay? Shape number one, all the other shapes work together to equal shape number one. So there's big squares and shape number two are smaller squares. In this case, there are four on the die board. Keep that in mind, quilters. Some of the dies have multiple shapes. So if your pattern says cut four two inch square or shape number two, you just need one piece of fabric, okay? They do cut two and a half inch squares. Shape number three, my all time favorite shape, half square triangles. The thing I love about AccuQuilt is we've cut off the dog ears. So from this point here to this point here is a perfect quarter inch seam. Now shape number four is different. These are quarter square triangles. You want to treat them as such. Uh, the lengthwise green is really important when you cut the shapes and you need to treat them as quarter square triangles. Sometimes quilters sew them together like half square triangles and then the green is wrong, okay? So we're gonna leave these out because I'm gonna leave them right here because in a few minutes we're gonna pull some. All right, K 
continuing on, and you'll notice quilters that all the dies are numbered, all the pockets are numbered, all the pockets have the shape that belongs in there. That's so you can keep things organized in your sewing room. How's your sewing room these days, Leslie? Kind of messy, I've been working on some projects. <laughs> there you go. Shape number five in every cube are smaller half square triangles. So in every cube there's big squares and little squares, big half square triangles and little half square triangles. This is actually the workhorse uh, because it's gonna allow other shapes to become new shapes. For example, shape number six, not just a square, but a square on point. It's meant to live on its tippy toes. So the shape you would need on the outside of this to create um, a block the same size as shape number one is that shape number five half square triangles. Makes the block square and a square. One of my all time favorite blocks, actually. Shape number seven is a parallelogram. Leslie, what's important to remember about a parallelogram? It is a directional die. It is a directional die. So if you want them all to face the same direction, you want them all the fabric to face up, if you want them to face opposite directions, fan fold your fabric. And then last of the eight shapes are rectangles. There's two on this die board. There's a blade in the center. All right. Now, keep in mind, quilters, the shapes are the same in every cube. They're just different sizes. And again, those free patterns for the 72 mix and match patterns are available at AccuQuilt.com. Are the cubes available at that 40% off today? They are. So the cubes range from $149.99 for the 4, 6, 8, and 9, and then $185.99 for the 10 and the 12-inch cube. Great day to get cubes. Also, speaking of patterns, everyone loves the quilt behind you. Oh, yes. That quilt is one of Porphyria's quilts. It is not an AccuQuilt pattern. We just put one of her quilts up since we have yes. her on our show. Yes, we honor Porphyria. Yeah, it's great, okay? It looks like questions, right? Yeah, like, like conversation. Conversations. Love, I bet it's called something like that. Probably. Okay, <laughs> we'll ask Porphyria. All right, so speaking of Porphyria's quilts, here is one that hangs in the art gallery today here at AccuQuilt. All right, so the question you need to start with is, what shapes do you see in this block? Well, of course you see half square triangles and squares. That's all it is. So could you make this block with your cube? Actually, you could make it with any cube, and actually those shapes, they're two different sizes. So you could make them bigger or smaller depending on the size cube you have. And just deciding if you wanna use Shape number one or shape number two is the squares. So super cool, and we'll talk more about it just here in a second. Don't forget our promo today, 40% off your order. You wanna use the code QUILT40, plus free shipping if you live in the contiguous U.S. Join Eric and I on February 8th at 12 noon Central Time for our perfect pairs show. We're gonna be joined by Alex Anderson and Ricky Timms. Be sure to register for the chance to win prizes. All right, Leslie, before I start cutting, uh, marking stuff up, do we have questions? Um, the main one was about the pattern because okay. everyone loves the pattern. <laughs> Thank you all for loving Perfurious <laughs> Quilt. Okay, and what are people, what's their favorite shapes? Well, a lot. So a lot of people are on the same page as you and say half square triangles. Yep. Um, Diana says triangles for pinwheels. Oh, Erica loves those pinwheels. Yeah. Jan yeah. likes the triangle in a square. Oh, that's such a good shape. That is a good shape. Yeah. Um, Tina says right now it's hunter stars. Oh, go for it, T. <laughs> I hope you're making them scrappy. <laughs> they're, they're my favorites. Yes. Okay, so now, now that you're gonna look for shapes, right, the next thing you need to look at for pattern conversion is what kind of grid is it on, okay? So remember, cubes are based on a two by two grid or what we call a four patch, all right? Now, when determining the size of the grid, you need to look for the standalone smallest standalone square, okay? So next we have other blocks are based on the three by three grid or nine patch, all right? So let's look at this block. Look at this, okay? And again, these are public domain blocks. Leslie, this is a variation of a very common block. Do you know which one it is? Is it Churndash? Yes, 
Look at Leslie knowing stuff on a Wednesday. I'm, I'm, I'm awake enough to know things. <laughs> she is. She has worked with me long enough that she knows those kinds of things. Okay, so let's look at this block. So quilters, where is the smallest standalone square? Well, it's going to be right here in the center. See that? Okay. So now I know that this is a section and this is a section and this is a section. So we have a three by three grid. So here's what I do. And when I convert patterns that I've purchased, I use a pencil, and, well I make a copy of it and then I use my pencil and I mark it out just like this, okay? So that I know how I'm building this, okay? Okay, look at this. Okay, so let's look at the shapes in it. So first here in the corners we have half square triangles, right? We have two of them in each of the corners. Here's the next block, right? What are those? Yeah, rectangles. So this block has a square, rectangles, and are these large or small half square triangles? They are, they're large ones. So here is my pro tip, okay? Um, I took craft foam and I took my four inch cube and I cut out all the shapes from the cube in multiples and in multiple colors, okay? And then what I did was I wrote the number on them. Now, I, why did I use the four inch cube? Because it was small enough that when I was done, I can put all the pieces in my little zippy bag. That's why. I know, Leslie's like, why did you use the four inch cube? <laughs> and that is why. So we're going to take the shapes from the cube and we're going to actually just recreate this block to create a pattern, okay? So shape number one is that center square. What else did we need? We needed rectangles. So we're going to put a rectangle around each one, okay? Listen, all of you who are snowed in today, boy, I hope you were just sewing for days. I'm so jealous. Okay, and then there were blue rectangles on the outside, right? Okay, and then what's the shape here? Yeah, shape number three, half square triangles. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them here. Okay. This is actually one of my all-time favorite things to do because I have quite a few patterns um, before I worked here at AccuQuilt that I just want to translate. So sometimes I look and I go, oh, look, I can do that. Okay, now look. I'm going to take shape number three on the outside. Look at this. Ta-da. So now I've recreated this to create a pattern. Now, if I was going to just create this block, I would take a picture of it, right, because then I know... Um, which ones I'm looking at. But let's go to our cube. We're going to use the 8-inch cube um, because that's what comes in the Ready, Set, Go. So we're going to use the 8-inch cube, and I'm going to pull shapes 1, 3, and 8 out of my cube. While I do, Leslie, do you want to, um, do we have questions or do we have comments? What are people liking? Well, Marilyn is wondering, would not craft foam dull the dyes quicker? No. You would think, right? I just do one layer at a time. You're going to get thousands of uh, cuts out of your cube, right, or out of your dies. Um, they're going to last thousands of cuts. What's going to wear out is your cutting mat. Now, it, you're still going to get thousands of cuts. You can cut. Now, if you don't have craft foam, you could use paper. You could use fabric scraps. You could do whatever you wanted to. I think back from when we did classes, someone's, my favorite suggestion someone said they did is they owned all the cubes and they cut their shapes based off the color of the cube and then oh, wrote the number yes. on them. So like the eight inch cube would be pink and the 12 inch cube right. would be green or gold, right. whatever color you gold. see that one as. Yeah, yeah. That's a great idea. That's a great idea. All right, so now I've pre-cut my fabric because I'm gonna show you how fast it is to sew one of these blocks together. Now here's my other pro tip, okay? I'm going to sew these half square triangles together, so I am going to cut them together. So I've just taken my two pieces of fabric, I'm going to lay it right over there because I just need them for the corners, and then the same with my rectangles. I'm going to sew them together, I'm going to cut them together. 
okay? So today I'm gonna use my go big, so I can cut two dies in one pass. All right, Leslie, while it's cutting, be sure quilters, I'm giving away our six inch cube, our six inch cube, our six inch strip die. Look, <laughs> see, this is what happens. I talk and then I can't run them together at the same time. Be sure and register for future events on our AccuQuilt event page for the chance to win. By registering, you're gonna receive emails and you're gonna learn about exciting things that are happening in the company. Leslie will announce the winner of our registered viewer at the end of our show, okay? All right, so here we go. I'm gonna cut this last one. So you could cut two at one pass, but I was talking. This happens a lot for me. When I'm at home, I think, oh good, I can cut two, and then I, I don't know, I'm watching TV or something. Okay, all right, here we go. And I have one string there, so I'm gonna use it. Hey, we have Karen K. Buckley. She's gonna be on our show soon, isn't she, Leslie? She is, I don't remember when. I feel like there's so many shows, I can't remember exactly which ones are She's which. She's coming in February. Is oh, it yeah. February? It is February. It is February. It's... She's coming this month. She is. <laughs> <laughs> Look at us knowing stuff. Okay. Everyone in the marketing team is rolling their eyes right now. Okay. Katie right. says 215. Oh, who said that? Katie. Thanks, Katie. See, Katie would know. She keeps us all in line. She does. <laughs> okay. Whether we want to be or not. Okay. So now I'm just going to start and I'm going to sew my pieces together. Okay, so I've cut my half square triangles together. Now they're just ready to go right to the um, sewing machine. And I have the correct contact lenses in today. The eye doctor fixed them because last week, um, we, did you watch? Because yeah. Justin um, was our biggest helper last week. And lots of people wanted Justin to come hang out with him. He's here, sorry folks. All right, so Leslie, while I'm doing this, tell us, do we have questions? What's people's favorite shape? Oh, we have a lot of favorite shapes. Someone said they had a quilty confession. Ariel, she says, I have a quilty confession. I hate making half square triangles because I'm so bad at it. Oh, that's because she has to cut the dog ears off. Yes. Use a die, Ariel. Um, but then That'll a lot of other people say half square triangles are their favorites. Yeah, I just think they're so great. I've got, Susan says flying geese. Right, which has half square triangles and yep. quarter square triangles. Hey, do you know, Leslie, off the top of your quilting head, um, what two shapes do you need to make flying geese? Shape five and four. Yes. Any cube. Any cube. Okay. So I'm just sewing half square triangles together, and then I'm just going to go right here and sew my rectangles together while I'm chain piecing. Chain piecing for days. Okay. Here we go. All right, and then Leslie, do you wanna talk about our promo again? Some great ideas for our promo today? Yeah, so the promo is 40% off your order. Um, if you don't have the cubes or the companions, today's a great time to get those. Um, cubes are $149.99 to $185.99, depending on the size. Right. And then companions are even better deal. Um, they're $95.99 to $119.99. There you go. Oh, I have a so it's a great time to finish out your cube sets. There you go. Um, and setting triangles, right? Because oh, yeah. if you're getting the cubes, you might as well get the setting triangles to go with them. Those are $53.99 to $65.99. That's amazing. Um, have you made yet, Leslie, a block with, um, a quilt with blocks on point yet? I haven't. I am working through the like eight quilts I want to make for my nieces and nephews. <laughs> you're just a little busy. Just a little busy. And so it's a lot of cube shapes I'm using. There you go. Okay, so look. Look how fast I'm just sewing this block. And we're gonna just sew the whole block together because we can, okay? And then we're gonna do a couple more and just show you how easy it is to convert patterns, okay? But this is the key. Whatever, however you wanna do it, you wanna make sure that you have some kind of way to keep track of your pieces because then it'll allow you to do what you need to do, okay? Um, during, during quarantine, I would give those pieces to Oakley and she would just sit around and make quilt squares with them. It was great. Are we good, Justin? Okay. Okay. There's movement in the thing here. All right, so we're just gonna press these. I'm gonna press them to the blue side. Huh. <laughs> the light blue. 
Okay. Okay. And go from here. Um, I love this concept of the grid because sometimes it's hard to find the grid, but if you look for that smallest square, that really is gonna make it so that you can be able to create your grid super fast. And sometimes it's hidden, right, Leslie? Sometimes yes. it's two half square triangles sewn together to make a square, right? Yep. So if you look through it, that's what you wanna be finding. But once you can determine the grid, and um, we've taught classes on the grid system and we've had like an eight by eight grid. Mm -hmm. So it just really depends on how big you want your block. Um, but most patterns I would say come with a two by two grid, you know, four patch or a three by three grid. Oh, here's trivia. We have one quilt block, right? That we launched last year that was on the five by five grid. Do you remember? Wasn't it, we just goose tracked, didn't we just yeah. release it? Wasn't it just a heart? You said last, did you, you say last year? Wasn't that just like last month? I don't know, <laughs> I'm the worst, okay? Okay, so look at this quilters, okay? All right, so now I have so many pieces together, okay? And look at that, I recreated the entire block. So you could change the colorway. you would just sew your rows together and press them either way, all right? I have another block, we're gonna sew the whole one together. So I love this idea of the grid. Now, I use the eight inch cube. So a two by two grid, which is this section right here, would equal an eight inch block. But this is a three by three grid. So four, eight, and 12. So keep that in mind, quilters. The bigger the grid, the bigger the block. Okay? All right. This is why the cubes are great, because now you could use the 8-inch cube with the 12-inch cube and so forth. That's, that's the beauty, right, Leslie, is that the cubes are meant to work together. Yes. Um, Robin's wondering, so will it always be a square as your smallest piece, even if it only has four pieces in it, to like if it's a 4 by 4 Right. Yes, it's always going to be the smallest square. Now keep in mind, and I'll show you here in just a second, sometimes shapes on the grid take up more than their space on the grid. And we'll talk about that here. Okay, I'm doing this organized because in a minute we're going to build another block and it needs some of these shapes. And then a couple other questions. Yes, Someone's yes, wondering, okay. why do you press from the front sometimes and the back others when you press your blocks? Okay, because... <laughs> because I'm here in the show and I'm, I'm talking and I'm not paying attention. Okay, always, always when I'm at home, I press on the back, okay? And my little shovel iron, you know, it's just easy to do them both. Also, I was reminded the goose track was a die to try for January. So if you want to bring the goose track back, now is the time to vote for it to come back. See, this is why I should not talk. <laughs> Sometimes I get in trouble. Yes, it was the die to try. I'm sure all of the team here was saying that. Okay, Die to try, so go to Goose Tracks and vote it back. Yes. Because it was really a fun block. It was, and it sold out in the first day when we yeah, had it. the first day within a minute. Okay, so this one is called Washington, Martha Washington Star. Okay, so look at it while it's up here in the screen. So again, what shapes is it gonna use? It's gonna use big half square triangles and big squares and half square triangles. And the blue and the white, those are actually quarter square triangles. I know, so again, a really fun block. So here's my square. Okay, so where is the smallest standalone square? Well, it's probably gonna be right here, okay? So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So now it's on a four by four grid. So if we're using the eight inch cube, I'm gonna show you this trick about it, okay? So again, I'm just gonna come right here so you can see the grid. Because then when you go to build your block again, you're gonna see all of the shapes, okay? There we go, there we go. Goose tracks, who knew? <laughs> You all did, you all knew, it was just last month, okay? All right, so there you go. So there's our grid. It's a four by four grid. 
So this, I'm gonna use the eight inch cube and we're gonna see how big the block is, okay? So we're gonna build it just like we did before. We're gonna use shape number one. Okay, we're gonna use the four inch cube to build it. But shape number one, the eight inch cube is how big, Leslie? What does it finish to? Four inches. Four inches, look at you. So this is actually when we make our, eight, if we were to use our eight inch cube, it would make a 16 inch block. Oh yeah. I know, which is big. Okay, so I'm gonna do exactly what I did before. I'm just gonna find my pieces and I'm gonna build my block. Okay, and you're really gonna get the hang of this. Now keep in mind we have um, the dog ears are cut off, so it's not gonna come together um, exactly right there, but you're gonna get the gist of how to build this. Okay, and here we go. And I made sure I counted all the pieces sometimes I have to do wonky things here. All right, all right, and before I do the outside, I'm gonna build here. Okay, so right here, this is shape number three, okay? And then this is shape number four, those quarter square triangles. Now, the thing you gotta remember when you're making this block is that you have the quarter square triangles go in the right direction. Okay, because in your quilting head, you might think they go like this, or you just have to look at the pattern. Okay, so we're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna come here with those quarter square triangles. We're gonna go like this. We're gonna add that shape number three. Okay, we're just gonna build this little pinwheel in the center. All right, let's see, do we have questions? We do have some questions, but okay. we're gonna cut again, aren't we? We are. Okay, good. Well, we have, not on this one, but on the next one, yes. Okay, because we have questions on placing fabric on the die, so Pam will show that again when yes. she cuts. I'm good. Yeah, we'll show you. Um, Pat wants to know, this is a good question. Okay. If you have a 10-inch cube and the pattern calls for the 8-inch cube, <gasps> what would you do about the strip dies in the pattern? Do you change the size? Oh, that's such a great question. Quilters ask that a lot. So I'm going to tell you I would change the strip dies in the pattern. So for example, this is written for the eight inch cube, it's probably gonna have a two and a half inch strip die. Yeah. So it works because 10 divided by two, right, makes a 10 inch finish block is five. But you could for sure use the five and a half inch strip that finishes to five inches. And quilters ask this all the time. They're like, well, the pattern says it makes an eight inch finish block. So in your quilting head, you'd think, oh, I'm gonna use the eight inch cube. But what if you don't have the eight inch cube? What if you have the six or the nine inch cube? Can you make the block? Mm -hmm. Yes, you can. You just have to adjust the fabric. And we have a pattern conversion chart that tells you like yes. how many shapes you can cut out of a yard of fabric, right? We do. Yes, Leslie will know that. I will find it and give it to the people. Yeah, Leslie like. will post that somewhere because that's really brilliant. Okay, so look, here we go. We're almost done with this block. So look how easy this was to recreate. Okay, so I'm using my four inch cube, right? So this finishes to two inches, so two, four, six, eight inches. But if you use the eight inch cube, it would finish to 16. So look at that, okay? And then now I know how many of each shape I need to have, right? Because it creates a pattern. All right, so real quick, why is the AccuQuilt fabric cutting system better than rotary cutting? Because have you ever tried to rotary cut quarter square triangles and half square triangles? It is a nightmare, okay? AccuQuilt is gonna be perfect every single time. That was the thing before I became part of the AccuQuilt team. I love half square triangles, but I hated like cutting off the dog ears and you know, it, it just, they just never turned out the right size. All right, don't forget today our code is QUILT40. Take 40% off your order. And if you live in the contiguous U.S., we are going to ship that to you free. So today's a great day to build a, a stock up on cubes. Next week, we're talking wonky heart. Yes. So it'd be a great day to order that wonky heart die if you don't have it. That okay. is only $41.99. Oh, my gosh. Happy Valentine's Day. Or stock up on heart applique, which is $26.99. There you go. All the things for Valentine's Day are coming up. So today's a really great day to do that. We're going to ship it to you free. No code required. Yep. Okay. Leslie, do you want to talk about our blog? Yeah. So our blog is um, 
lots of patterns that only live on the blog. They're specific to the blog. They're designed by our go-getters. Um, so you can meet them, mm -hmm. meet what they're doing, hear what they're doing. Yep. Um, and our team also writes a lot of inspirational posts on you how do. to get yourself organized. We talk about all of our product launches and but all the fun stuff. It's just a really great, and it comes out twice a week. You can get notification. Two to three times a week. There we go. See? And yesterday it was all about the farm animals die. Yes, it was, and all the amazing projects oh, you can make. Cute. So cute. All right, quilters, you ready? It's only an hour show, so this is the chance. <laughs> it's time to put your conversion skills to the test. This block, again, is a public domain block. It's called Jester Puzzle, and I love it. I just think it's so cute. So again, let's look through and see what shapes do you see. Well, first of all, it has flying geese, and Leslie told you that there are flying geese in every cube. There are shapes four and five, which are the quarter square triangles and the half square triangles. That green shape there is our um, parallelogram. So it's a directional shape. So you kind of got to look on the quilt block to see are all of those parallelograms facing the same direction? And the answer is no, as we're all turning upside down to see it. And then in the center are the rectangles, right? And then where is the smallest standalone square? Right there in the middle. No, yeah. The Pam, I think the parallelograms are all going the same way. Okay, see? This is why we all come to If work. you turn all the blocks with the flying <laughs> geese on the top, they're all pointing. Okay, see, look. Same way. You're right. You're right. I would know that when I lay it out. Look at us. Okay, so here we go. Here's our, here's our block we're going to make. We're going to cut one real quick, and we're going to sew one of these sections together. Okay, so where's the smallest square? right there in the middle. So this is a one, two, three, four, five by five grid, okay? So I'm gonna use my eight inch cube. I'm gonna use the smallest shape, which is shape number two for the small square. So how big is my block? 10 inches. Oh. Did you know you could make a 10 inch block with an eight inch cube? I no. did. I did. So now you can see that you can make blocks with the 10 inch cube and the eight inch cube that are the same. Okay. We're gonna have to clean this ruler, Leslie, <laughs> before I use it to like cut fabric. Holy smokes. Okay, here we go. Ooh, my line wasn't very straight there, but it's okay. Okay, so here's our grid. All right, now. This is the example that I'm gonna talk about on how sometimes the shape in the block takes up more than its share of the space. It's like being on a plane, okay? People take up more than their seat on the plane. This rectangle takes up two spaces on the five by five grid. This parallelogram takes up an odd shape, but these two shapes on the grid, okay? Now, could you have made these with smaller half square triangles? Why, yes, you can, because there is no die police. Would it have worked? It would have, okay? But I wanted to use the parallelogram and the quarter square triangles. So that's kind of cool, right, about pattern conversion. All right, so let's build one real quick. We're just gonna build the corner over here, and then we're gonna sew it, because people wanna know, right? There we go. So again, I'm just using my little pieces. Oh, here, we're gonna build two because then we can know if the parallelograms go the same direction. Okay, now here's a parallelogram. I'm gonna show you a trick, quilters. In your quilting head, you're gonna think that parallelogram, that shape number five fits on the short end of it and it doesn't, okay? It fits on the long end of that parallelogram. Keep that in mind, okay? Otherwise, it's not gonna work. I'm sorry, guys, we have a green shape on a green mat, but <laughs> that's what the pattern had, so. All right, and remember, we're not gonna worry about it because we have a quarter inch seam allowance, okay? So, then, what's the shape here? Shape number four, ooh, Karen K. Buckley scissors, holy smokes, okay? And then what's the shape we need on the outside, Leslie? Shape number five. 
There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna build a block over here. And we're gonna see if the parallelograms go the same direction. <laughs> Why, yes, they do. Good job, team. Okay, so I'm gonna add shape number five to the long end. We're gonna build flying geese. Look at how fun that is. Okay. And again, this is just a great way to build it out so you make sure you get all of the pieces. Okay. All right, so let's cut some fabric. So somebody had a question about cutting fabric, Leslie? Yes, how do you lay it on the... Um, yeah, on the we're going to talk right now about that. You want to have the lengthwise grain... Oh, okay, so I need four, five, seven, eight, and two. Two. One second here. Four... Five, seven, and eight. Okay. Don't stack your dies like this. <laughs> well, like for long periods of time. Actually, we have these storage racks at AccuQuilt, and I put my dies for the project that I'm working on in those storage racks. That's smart. Yeah. Next to your sewing machine? Next to your cutter? Sewing machine. Yeah. And my little cutter. Okay. So what you want to do is you want to have the lengthwise grain of the fabric traveling back and forth across that die board, okay? So um, I need a whole bunch of shape number fives. So what I've done is I've measured from here to here, added a quarter of an inch on either side, and I'm just, I just rough cut my fabric, and I'm going to go back and forth. How many layers can I do, Leslie? Six. Six, okay. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to find that lengthwise grain, which is right here for my parallel. So look, right there. Okay. So I'm going to get that. There we go. Okay. And then you line it up with the shape of the die on the die board, not yep. the die board itself. Yep. We're going to line it up with the shape. And I'm just going to cut two of them here. Okay. And yes, because I'll cut four because you want that lengthwise green. If you try to line up your fabric with, here, I'll use this shape. Um, with the die board, you're gonna waste all of this fabric, okay? So I'm just gonna lay my parallelograms right here, okay? Quarter square triangles, I just need four. So I'm gonna find that lengthwise green. Look, nice and tight. Low and wonky, lots of stretch. You can know because here's the salvage edge parallel to those lengthwise blades. Okay, and then the last two shapes, um, I need some rectangles. And I only need two squares. I only need one actually, so, but I'm just gonna cut two. Okay, so I have two cutting mats because in the cutter you can go two at a time. So we're really gonna show you how that works. Okay, so here's label at my belly, lengthwise green is what we're always looking for. Here we go, ready? Doesn't like it if you push it, see? It's like teenagers telling them what to do. Okay. Okay, slide, don't lift. All right. Slide, don't lift. Now I have some rectangles. Okay. All right. We're gonna come right here, cut our next two. So quarter square triangles and those parallelograms. And Leslie, do we have questions while I'm cutting? We do, but a reminder that Go Big is 225 off with a code of big 225. Big 25. 225. 225. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was something because today was 22222. That would have been fun. I know. We should have gone with that. Um, Jacqueline's wondering, so the length wise grain goes into the cutter? Yes, it goes parallel to the lengthwise blades. We'll show you one more time. Okay. And then okay. would with print fabric, would you fan fold your print fabric as well? Yeah, yeah, because these aren't directional. Sh oh, I see what you're asking me. Oh, I would test it. Because some print fabric, it's okay because you can just go back and forth, but I would test it to see, okay? So here's the salvage edge lengthwise grain. Just gonna go back and forth, just like that. All right, so look at all of you creating patterns. It's so great. Oh, here, I have one more to do. 
And if you want to rewatch the show, it lives on our Facebook and our YouTube pages. It does. So this afternoon when you're thinking, oh, there's a pattern I want to convert, how did Pam do that? Yep. There is all sorts of ways to do that, okay? So I'm just going to do one little block here. I'm going to move all my pieces down. Listen, I have lost so many of these little pieces. I just am always getting new, new ones. I put them in my little Ziploc bag, and then who knows what happens. I think the cat gets them, okay? All right, so let's create this real quick. Show you how we're going to lay it out. So there's our rectangles, right? Here's all of our half square triangles. So we're going to lay it around. Sorry again, green fabric, boys. Okay, we're going to lay it right here. Ooh. There we go. We're going to lay it the long side. Okay. I know everybody's all in a panic now. Hold on. There we go. This is why we lay stuff out. Okay, where's my, I moved it. Here we go. <laughs> okay. And we're going to add those little half square triangles to the outside. Okay. And then I'm going to show you real quick because we're running out of time how to sew flying geese. Okay. Okay. So we're going to lay this here. We'll come back to this. I'm going to show you how to lay flying geese. So flying geese on the outside, right? Needs shape number five. Okay. So I'm going to show you this trick on how to sew flying geese together because then you can sew your block together. Okay. All right, here we go. So what we're going to do is we're going to sew one side down and you would do all of the sides, right? Okay, so let's say I'm looking at this pattern. Yes. And what do you think you would do instead of chisels? They're half square triangles, aren't they? Yeah, because, oh gosh, all right. Yeah, so as I'm doing this, when I laid out my pieces, I thought for sure this was a parallelogram, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and it is because we're gonna sew, oh, not that piece, <laughs> to the long end. Okay, that's how you sew that, all right? But if you just wanted to use half square triangles, you could. And Pam, okay. someone was wondering what stitch length do you recommend for piecing? I got nothing. Whatever the sewing machine sews is what I do. Okay. Okay, look at that. Um, okay, so now I've sewn one half of my flying geese. Look at this. So now I'm gonna press away. And yes, I always press from the back of the quilt. That's so funny. I never think about that. Okay. All right. So I, if I was sewing all four, four flying geese, I would have done all of one side. Now, look. Now I'm going to sew these together right here. Look. Now, quarter inch seam allowance from there to there. So I'm going to show you this because this is one of those blocks that when you sew it together, you're going to say to me, Pam, you have sewn this together wrong. But the answer is no, I'm going to show you something. Okay. Look, Justin didn't have to come even one time to fix my sewing machine. Hey, today's a great day to change the needle in your sewing machine. That's what I did. <laughs> All right. So now I'm going to come here. Okay. All right. Now, some of you are going to say, Pam Heller, you have sewn that wrong because, get my point here, okay? You've sewn that wrong because there's a gap here. But actually, I sewed it correctly because then the next piece that you put on there, let me find a shape four, okay? It's going to come right here with that seam allowance. And that way, your flying geese are perfect. Okay, so this is my trick. And then my last tip is when you're sewing flying geese to the next group of flying geese, I sew it with this part up. And the reason is that way I can stitch and then I can see right here 
where those um, stitches come together and just continue down. And that way you're gonna get a perfect point, okay? Yeah, look at that. Lives on our Facebook page. <laughs> All right, join Eric and I on February 8th, 12 noon Central Time for Pairing Perfection Shows. Be sure to register for the chance to win prizes. Don't forget our code today up to 40, uh, you get 40% off your order. Use that code QUILT40. Plus you get free shipping if you live in the contiguous US. Leslie, what's the code for um, the Go Big? It is BIG225. BIG225. Yes. Okay. All right. Do we have a winner from our registered viewers? We do. Let me okay. find it. And I bet Brock has a drum roll. They took away my cowbell from yesterday. Right after the show. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame them. No. <laughs> it was amazing. I landed, lasted, lasted the whole show with it. Okay. Do you want to announce our winner for today? I don't have it in the show flow. You oh, get to I announce do. it from the graphic. Okay, I will announce our winner today. <laughs> Drum roll, please. Thelma C. from Harvest, Alabama is going to win our six-inch ship bag. Congratulations. You're going to love it. I love those big wide borders. All right, be sure to join us next week for AccuQuilt Live as we get ready for Valentine's Day. Halloween, Valentine's Day, my two favorite holidays. We're gonna make a super cute, fun table runner and we're gonna use the Go Wonky Heart Die. How much is that today with 40% off, Leslie? It is $41.99. And it will ship free. Yes. If you live in the contiguous US, okay? So be sure to register for Wednesday shows now to, um, for the chance to win prizes and that way you can get that um, Wonky Heart Die today as well. On behalf of our entire team, we have Morgan off-site and Emily is off-site. In the house is Leslie and Brock and Justin and Joe. I'm Pam Heller reminding you at AccuQuilt, we help you cut time so you can quilt more. We'll see you next week.